Okay, so why don't we um, we kick off? So uh, the rules to the this game are uh, the presenters. We've got eight great projects which we've selected. Uh, each project is going to have three minutes to present. I'll be uh, I'll have the stopwatch, and um, and then we're going to ask a few few questions. Two minutes of questions. So five minutes for for each person, and um, and we'll go from there. So. The first project is the Palace Park Warsaw, and Ehard, if you want to introduce yourself and um, uh, announce your project, and I will um, get my stopwatch going. Over to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Three minutes for an investment of 200 million euros. It's a little bit... Uh, uh, little time, I would say, but I make it quick. It's uh, the, it's a mixed-use development uh, in a very luxury segment of uh, two hotels, 46 boutique hotels, 46 keys boutique hotel, and 150 keys uh, golf hotel. It includes 720 residential part. It includes two spas, a destination spa and a thermal spa, a conference center of 1,200. A golf course designed by Jack Nicklaus, and uh, the uh, master plan is designed by WATG London. Um, so we have uh, an old palace which is built in 1825. We're going to extend that to 46 key luxury hotel. Right here, you have the. Uh, Destination spa right next door, falling into the lake, and you have a, a ballroom of 400 people for weddings and conferences uh, next to the Palace Hotel. The big hub is the Golf Hotel, right here. Let me go back. With uh, 150 keys, a, a conference center for 1,500 people, a, a thermal spa with uh, uh, sport activities like squash, volleyball, basketball, um, uh, massage, uh, 30 massage rooms, 10 saunas, and the thermal spa is uh, as well. Uh, all, all in the winter you have you have jacuzzis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have a large lake with a wave garden for surfing, for boats. You have a family beach. You have a, a kids beach, as well a, a senior beach, and you have about 200 branded residences. We're just talking to hotel operators, and um, uh, altogether it's uh, 640 apartments and 80 villas. So that's basically, in a nutshell, just give me three minutes. <laughs> 30 seconds, okay. 30 seconds? Okay, great, great. Um, it is, uh, as well, it has a tennis, uh, tennis academy, it has a golf academy, it has a golf clubhouse, and uh, you see here the golf course going all around the estate with uh, some beautiful residential uh, facilities. You have four... Okay, I think uh, two seconds left, one, okay, that's great. Oh, well done, you got that going too, all right. Um, Ihar, thanks for that. T tell us a little bit about the developer, who owns the land? The land is owned by, by, by a private a private investor, that's the land is uh, it, uh, free and clear. It's owned and, uh, and uh, it's uh, a Polish, a Polish uh, ownership. Okay, so you're putting the land into the development? That will be equity as well, equity. yes. Equity, okay. Yes. And so have you spoken to uh, any of the brands, any of the operators? We have talked to, I think, every brand existing. Okay. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the planet. Okay. And, and there's some interest there? There is a lot of interest, yes. We okay. already have two letters of interest, there are more coming. Okay. And uh, we are having a feasibility study of Pricewaterhouse which uh, we are completing this week, uh, and we are going for building permission uh, the, in April this, this, this year, and hope a building permission by October, and start sales and marketing of the residential part, and start to negotiate management contracts uh, the, during the summer. Okay, so what is, it you're, what is it you're looking for at IHIF? We are looking for investors, we're looking for operators, 
We are looking for spa operators. Uh, basically, everybody who is present at this conference, uh, we are we are like to talk to. Okay, so we see uh, we look four seasons. And, uh... <laughs> uh, the, the, this is definitely designed because all the rooms are minimum for 45 square meters. That's the smallest room. We have the presidential suite is 800 square meters. The and the palace is 300 square meters. So uh, it is designed for even for the four seasons. Yes. Perfect. And then just what's the context in terms of Warsaw? We don't see many projects in Warsaw. So is Warsaw on the rise? What's yes, happening in Warsaw? Very briefly. <laughs> it, is, it is about 45 minutes from downtown Warsaw. It's an excellent location. It is the apple orchard of the North northern Europe. A beautiful countryside. And if you want to, uh, you live in Warsaw, which is an upcoming city. And I don't know if you've been there lately. It's, I think, one of the most advanced cities in Eastern Europe. Uh, you have... Uh, Activities, if you want to go somewhere to the Baltic Sea or to Sakopane in the mountains, here you have something with everything available from jogging to bicycle, from cross country, running, etc., etc., uh, next to the city of a capital city. So, so. Okay, great. It sounds like a great project. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Sue. Thank you so much. Any questions? <laughs> No, no, no questions. Um, right. But is that uh, is that a WATG project? Yes. Oh well, there we go. This makes it really serious. <laughs> so. Well, that's Excellent. a lot of money spent already. I, so. I bet. I bet. <laughs> Very good. But is it what a, an exciting project that is? Okay. So our next uh, presentation is from Lena, who's going to be from Zara Investment Holding, and this is the Thermal Springs and Eco Lodge in uh, in Jordan. So Lena. Do we have Lena here? No. All right, moving on. How about, um, d yep, okay, great. So, Furnias, so you're speaking on um, the, Cy the Cyprus, uh, Cyprus life. So we're gonna give you three minutes. Of course. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Sofronis Podamidis, I'm coming from the island of Cyprus and with the help of a German medical team and uh, we plan to have uh, a medical uh, all year round destination, especially on the prevention and the idea of uh, is a five star hotel directly on the beach but uh, at the same time it has also real estate attached to it so we make it very attractive for the investor. Also, 30% of the hotel is a condo, which also is very attractive for the Chinese market because uh, we're going to have 30 titles, and every title it can be sold for 300,000 euros, which means that uh, they get a visa and a residence plus passports, five passports for this. So it has this idea of real estate and all-inclusive idea. We re revert it. What mean we revert it? We take the all-inclusive, which now in, now in Cyprus is, the, is not so healthy, is kind of old-fashioned anymore, and we make it an alternative to have a, a healthy version for, for couples from 35 to 65, and we, we structure the concept that uh, it can be all the year round destination because the facilities we're going to build, it will offer that all year round destination, especially off season. So uh, it's uh, designed also with the German team here to lower our costs in winter time. So we have the heat water, the heat swimming pool, and that uh, gives us an advantage of the operating cost to have lower price. So we have all the year round destination. At the same time, we like to franchise this, and we like with our German team, which they run a medical hotel in Tel Aviv. So our team will be trained in Tel Aviv, and then we clone it, the whole thing, come to Cyprus. And exactly the same idea we like to do it in Creta and other islands. So the idea of somebody investing now, the 30% we ask in equity, it will be able to have payback period three times. The reason is, is because of the condo. Uh, by selling them to Chinese, which are really demanding now, because if they invest now in Cyprus, they cannot have return of the investment. Where they have a return of the investment. And uh, also, uh, at the same time, we, we have finance from the European Investment Bank for the 50% of our project. So we're asking only for 11 million, I even say the number. We're offering 65% share of our project, plus the franchise possibility. And the most important thing, Cyprus, will be the training center to make this into other islands. So the most difficult stuff we have three years now is to find a medical existing hotel that's willing to open a branch in another country. And Cyprus, we believe, by lowering, uh, now is in Europe, is for the upper middle class. So it's very expensive. So we want to offer it to, let's say, middle class, 
We make it soft medical, but not clinical. And offering this all year round destination in all inclusive terms. So it's all inclusive on health, and at the same time, offering it to the middle class, which now is very expensive to have it in Europe. So uh, this is a great opportunity for investment because there is no risk. You're buying something directly on the beach and you have immediately titles. And at the same time, the returns are very, very quickly because uh, by having a medical hotel, you can sell your real estate attached to it. And also we are 10 minutes from Limassol, which is very attractive for all the people. We said all the year-round destination. In winter time, we designed to have conference and we divided. Okay. Sorry, go. Time up. Very good. So just with that one, um, if people are interested, have you had all the, all the studies done? Is there, a, is there a financial feasibility thing that people can look at in order to get a bit more information? We have a, busy, a, a full business plan ready by our medical team and by also Deloitte of Cyprus. We have also some, uh, I have 20 offers to make another tuning of our medical, you know, because everybody wants to make us a business plan. Uh, but we already have a full, uh, ready-made uh, business plan. Okay. And then one of the challenges with Cyprus, of course, is the seasonality profile. And so uh, how's, how's that going to work uh, in your case? The reason is we built it in such a way because having so many treatments, 4,000 square of spa, we can offer off-season these treatments that the normal hotel cannot have. You have to build it from the beginning to be all year round. If you don't have the facilities, you're not gonna have it full in winter. And also we develop this dynamic package. We invite physiotherapists in winter time. We make seminars, we do other things that would enrich the product to have this all year round destination. Okay, um, and in terms of the ownership of the land? We own the land and we are uh, also, we offer the, the, the investor we have the 30 titles of the condo will be straight away to the owner, to the new investor. So he, he, it can be safe because even the hotel doesn't do well, he still has the 30% of the property on his own name. Can be sold to Chinese, to, to Russians, to everywhere, everybody. Okay. That's the safe about it. Okay, and, and what is it you're looking for at the moment? We're looking for 11 million and the reason is we have to have this equity to get the EIB bank loan. Okay. And that's the reason we are uh, looking now, and we're offering 65% shares of the project. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Okay. Our next project is the Hotel Breeze in Amsterdam, which is a zero carbon hotel concept. And um, to have us present is. <laughs> <laughs> Good, mor good, yeah. good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Wienand de Grauw, uh, Eon Plaza Hotels. Our company uh, uh, already operates two hotels in Amsterdam. We are a small company. Uh, we have a new project uh, coming up. Uh, start building, hopefully, uh, if the permission is uh, in time, we will start building. Uh, it's running already, yeah. No, sorry, uh, we're on there. Oh, I can, we'll I can see it here as well, yeah. yeah um, Okay, our company uh, Aeon Plaza Hotels is building, uh, planning to build the Hotel Breeze, which is a zero energy hotel, the first zero energy hotel in the world is supposed to be. Um, we're going to build that. By the way, we see now uh, our two existing hotels. You probably better follow the video. <laughs> this is uh, our Dutch design hotel Artemis. It's a special concept as well. Uh, the new Breeze Hotel, as we see it here, is going to be the first uh, nearly zero energy hotel in the world. What we do uh, in uh, Amsterdam, we have the, the, the free locations and that new hotel will get its own concept, will get its own, own identity. It's close to the center, 15 minutes. As we can see, it's near the, the, the sea side uh, of, uh, of Amsterdam and a small harbor we have over there. The concept is based on earth, wind and fire. It has a special ecosystem which, uh, which is the first in the world uh, completely, completely naturally designed and it's uh, using actually the wind, it's using the sun to, uh, to make the circulation go around in the building. We'll have uh, the edible gardens to, to, uh, to make the, the concept to a complete concept. As we see here, the ecosystem. Uh, the, the wind comes in the building, uh, cooled by uh, the, the groundwater that we use for it. 
and it pushes itself actually into the building. On the other side, on the right hand, uh, left hand side of your uh, picture, you see the sun shining on our uh, sun solar chimneys and that actually causes extraction of the building. The heat that comes out of the building will store underground and will reuse uh, later on in the, in the, for heating our water or our building. The building is completely covered in, uh, in solar panels. Uh, the, the, especially the south side is, uh, is going to be uh, used for special film uh, panels which are not dependent on the, uh, uh, the sunbeam itself but on light uh, intensity. As you can see it's on the harbour side as well, uh, so we have a, a small city harbour uh, and uh, the, the beach on the other side. What we're looking for here, and uh, that's why we're here, is uh, uh, we're looking for investors, uh, not specifically for this uh, version of Breeze, but uh, more to put Breeze to more cities throughout Europe. And that's actually what... Uh, okay. um, perfect timing. Um, what? what um, uh, so you've got, just so I understand, you've got the one hotel in Amsterdam or... or no, we have two in Amsterdam. Two hotels in Amsterdam. Uh, one downtown in Amsterdam, which okay. is... Okay, and are the, but these aren't necessarily zero carbon hotels? No, Okay. not yet. <laughs> All right, so you've got the hotel experience, you've got, and you, this is the brand on the new concept. Yes. Breeze, okay. Yes. Um, and so you've, you've got this, so what is the, um, have you got the location for this particular project? Yes, we have a, uh, for the Breeze, uh, we have a location on the uh, east side of Amsterdam. So do you own the site? Uh, no, the, the site is leased, okay. uh, uh, leased to, from the city. The, the, the city doesn't sell the ground there. I think we've got the city here. René? Yes, René is here. Is, 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 is this a good location? <laughs> no question. <laughs> Okay, great. So, uh, nearly zero, what does that mean? Uh, at this moment, we are, uh, we're still uh, uh, working on the technical systems to bring it to really uh, zero energy. Uh, so, we are a bit on the careful sides uh, still. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, we are on uh, calculated 82%. Uh, and there's still some things in investigation. And I think we're really going to make it to make the, the hotel rooms, uh, at the minimum the hotel rooms. Would this, would the this be their first hotel in the world that's got to this sort of level? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. Uh, uh, and is it more, is it more expensive to build a hotel like this? It is. However, okay. uh, we have been sponsored by uh, by the, the local by the government, uh, by the Dutch government. Uh, there is a special uh, subsidized project for that airco system that we have uh, have developed. We do that together with two technical universities in the Netherlands, and uh, we got uh, quite an amount. Uh, um, One million euro was sponsored to develop that system, okay. uh, which makes the. the the other implementations of techniques, which are also more expensive, uh, makes it more uh, yeah, feasible to, to, to earn it back. Uh, definitely we will have uh, hardly any energy costs, uh, probably some water and uh, maybe some additional energy that we need. But uh, the, we will save uh, a lot on energy costs, uh, making a good uh, return on investment at the end of the line. Because presumably this is where everybody's heading. Ultimately, you're just kind of at the cutting edge of it. Uh, so you're having to dig deeper on the capex at the front. Mm -hmm. But in terms, so you've, you guys have run the numbers, and it sounds like you've got some grant funding to help with the capex. But it, you are expecting some payback in the not too distant For future. For sure, yeah. <laughs> uh, in, especially in the Netherlands, there is at this moment a very uh, friendly tax climate for uh, for uh, sustainable uh, investments. 27% uh, can be, uh, sorry, 40% of our total investment is uh, is considered uh, sustainable. Out of that amount, we can get 27% uh, back on taxes in two years, three years. Are we going to hear so much more about this in the future? So yeah. Which yeah. at the end of the line, it means that we're investing a little bit more, but we, we uh, uh, after all the advantage of tax advantages, we're going to actually invest less than uh, than doing building a normal hotel. On that Do you side. think that guests actually care? I think so. I think there's a definitely a growing market uh, of, of guests that uh, specifically will look for those uh, projects. And in our other hotels, we do have green key certificates, which is simply not, uh, not good enough anymore nowadays. Uh, this is going to be BREEAM certified uh, on an excellent level, the highest level uh, reachable. And uh, our, our guests, uh, the, the, the big com corporate companies, uh, they, they demand it nowadays. They won't even make a contract anymore with that. So, so you're, looking to exp uh, you're looking for projects throughout Europe and investors, of course, to expand yes. this brand. And you're the management company as well? We are. Yeah. Okay, so would you be interested in Qatar, for example? We have the Qataris here in the room. 
I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I think Qatar, the sun shines very well, so this should be. Uh, you're looking for a unique. There should be definitely aren't you? possibilities. Yeah. yeah, so that could be uh, could be a tie up there. Good. But I, I think you, I think the problem you have though in the Middle East, don't you, with this technology, is um, dust for on the solar panels. Yeah, for the, for the regular solar panels, that is definitely. A, uh, but these a aren't matter. regular. Uh, the one on the roof that we have, these are regular panels. Yeah. But the ones on the on the facades, these are, uh, are also a new development. Okay. These are the so-called fin uh, foil panels, yeah. and these are uh, they need light intensity, so they're less uh, for du for dust. They have less okay. Uh, problems. Okay, great. What an interesting project. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thanks. Do we have Anada in the room? Uh, no, we, we do have Who's Smith. Me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. Sorry. Um, so it's your turn. Yeah. Yep, your turn. And so you're going to be talking about the, uh, the Tagazoot. Tagazoot Resort. Okay. All right. And um, over to you. Three minutes. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, for your interest. Uh, my name is Salim Mikram. I'm working for the Moroccan Agency for uh, Tourism Development, and uh, I'm going to present you today um, a very nice opportunity, very attractive, which is called Tarazout Bay. Um, so Tarazout Bay is a is a seaside resort. Uh, we're developing it um, near the city of Agadir. Um, so. Basically, um, this is no. The first point is this is no greenfield. This is no greenfield. So it's uh, next to the city of Agadir. Agadir has been a seaside resort for over 40 years. Um, so it's it's been very popular amongst uh, Germans at some point. Um, it's no greenfield because Moroccan government has also been investing a lot in land developments. Um, uh, so um, uh, so I wanted to say also uh, close to Agadir. So it's very close to the uh, airport. Airport. Uh, so you have like more than 34 direct air connections. Uh, to most European cities. Um, so what it means is it's not like we're not asking you to put a hotel in, in the middle of nowhere just because it's sunny and warm. This is this is really uh, very, very uh, extensive uh, connections with Europe. Uh, another point is um, that uh, it's, it's also uh, very uh, popular now amongst uh, surfers. There have been a lot of uh, surfers. Uh, it's, it's a very internationally recognized surf spot. Uh, so today it's still, um, still very, uh, I would say very um, based on that niche market uh, surface and the idea behind the project is really to broaden you know the interest and and make the project available for a larger public a larger public of, of families of independent travelers um, so what we're looking for um, yeah and what what, may, what 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 is different about is this project is that it is on the Atlantic Ocean so um, if you look at the map uh, you, you've got the Mediterranean uh, you've got a lot of seaside resorts there uh, Morocco is in the south um, shore uh, of the Mediterranean, and um, well, it means it, it means that um, it, when the project reaches maturity, it's going to be hard to to duplicate elsewhere because well, it's just because of geography, right? Um, and and Atlantic Ocean is a very di different experience from Mediterranean, very different. Um, I'm not saying it's better or worse, it's just different. The climate, the people, the food, uh, and also the areas, that, uh, the activities that you, you can do there. You can do surf, you can do kite surf, a lot of activities. Uh, so what we're looking for is, is for um, uh, hotel developers. We have several lots uh, in, in, in Tarazout that needs um, investors to, to develop. Um, there's already um, Hayat Hotel operating right now. So that means, you know, that there, there are definitely interests um, and uh, what, what, uh, sorry, um, it's here. So th this is the master plan here. We've got a few lots available uh, right now. Uh, and there's also an eco resort which is planned. So th this, this, this is uh, w w what we're looking for. The investment size uh, is going to be from 25 million euros to 40 million euros, depending on the on the positioning of the hotel and uh, and and. Uh, That's the development, the hotel development, from 25 million euros to 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 40, depending on the lot, depending on the position of the hotel. So that's you know that that's the, the investment size. We're looking at a, an IRR of of 15 to 17 percent. Uh, yeah. So so that's basically that's basically it. 
And at the moment, you're looking for investors just for the hotels. Is there residential real estate as well involved with the? With um, the in the in the eco resort parts, which is the the lot on the on on the left hand of the of the of the master plan, this is this is uh, mixed indeed mixed uh, uh, investments. There are two hotel developments as well as a residential uh, unit. Yeah, a residential part. Okay, and this project clearly has the support of the Moroccan government. But uh, are there any investments incentives associated with this? Through yeah, just... yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the 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 acquisition of land. There's a subsidy which is granted by the Moroccan uh, Fund for uh, Tourism Development uh, that can be up to 50 percent of of the land acquisition. So that's um, that's a, a first incentive. What happens also is um, there is um, a, a total corporate tax exemption for the first five years of operations, uh, not not five years of inception, I, I, I insist on that, five years of operations. There are VAT tax cuts, uh, 50 per, uh, total VAT ta tax cut for imported goods and capex um, uh, for the first three years since inceptions. Uh, so yes, there, there, are, there are incentives there that, that definitely um, you know improve the return on, on, on investment. And who, who are the likely visitors or tourists going to be to come to the, the project, just in, in case it's a core cool market that the, the people here, yeah, well, delegates, work in? Yeah, sure. Uh, Morocco is just a top north uh, of Africa. We're just like three hours away from most European uh, capitals. Like um, from Madrid, for instance, less than two hours. Paris is three hours. Berlin, yeah, I've just... I've just Came come from from Casablanca. It's three hours and a half, so it's you know we, we've we've really uh, at the gates of the biggest um, yeah, out like outbound tourist market in the world, which is which is Europe. And the idea is like really to to and um, surprisingly like there's no uh, renowned surf uh, location in, in in this area of the world. Like America, they have they have Hawaii, they have many surf spots in 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 Mexico. And if you think about a surf spot uh, in this region you have none and that's 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 what makes this investment different um, and I think and I think there's there's definitely potential to capitalize on on this Salam, are you a surfer yeah well definitely yeah. <laughs> definitely well yeah I, I'm, I'm a surfer so I know I know the potential there I'm not a professional surfer I I, I like the sport but it's oh, not yeah. like so, what, so so has there been uh, a master plan study done on this yeah 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 of course Who, who's, who's done that um, uh, there, there's, uh, it's a, it's a local company. It's uh, working with the Moroccan Fund of uh, Tourism Development. Um, they've worked on that. There's a development company called SAPT um, a company, and it's uh, uh, made of uh, um, both um, um, private and public uh, uh, investors. So it's just not like a Moroccan government-supported uh, um, uh, project. There's also private investors in there. So which means that you know that definitely um, uh, it will be like a, a, a good a good partnership to to do with this and, with and you guys. already have Hyatt in there already sorry you already have Hyatt in, in yes this project yes already, yeah you know? they're, they're they're already investors which have like they, there are lots which are already uh, um, I would say granted for for okay. developments so okay, there's definitely appetite for that and I think um, yeah it's it's gonna okay, be great. a all right success. thank you so much Lim. thank you thank you for your interest Okay, the next uh, presentation is on Oman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's. Yeah. It's Muscat. It. Yeah. No, you one more. Not yet. Not yet. So we're in a Muscat now. Hi. Hopping around the globe. Good to see. You. Hey, nice to meet you too. Okay, so you're gonna you're speaking on the Omran yes, project. Indeed. Okay. Yes. All right. Your three minutes begins now. Good afternoon, everybody. Moving a little east, southeast from Morocco, passing over Saudi Arabia, one would pass by Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and after like 30 minutes would arrive in Muscat, um, which is a, a, a lovely uh, Middle Eastern, um, uh, somewhat quiet and charming uh, capital. Um, my name is Zoltan Kali. I work for Omran, which is the largest developer uh, in Oman. We currently have around 12 hotels which we own and some of them manage, and a pipeline of three under construction and two resorts under construction. And I wanted to introduce you, this is just a business card for this very interesting project, which is located in the very heart of Muscat, the historic center of an area called Matra, next to the um, few hundred year old Souk, and it's a lively neighborhood populated by 
uh, Omanis, uh, lots of them living in buildings which were built a couple of hundred years ago. This is an ex-port, and the ex-commercial port of Muscat, which, is go which was vacated by industrial and commercial activities two years ago, moved to a new port, which is a, a little north of Muscat. And we have the opportunity, as a government-backed developer, to convert the, this 60 hectares plot of land into a very interesting tourism waterfront development. Um, it's, um, uh, the, the best comparisons would be to look at or to think of uh, the waterfront in Cape Town or the waterfront in, uh, waterfronts in New Zealand, to some extent Barcelona is, is, a, good, is a good comparison. This is a, a concept master plan done by Atkins. We're looking um, for four phases to develop the, uh, the area. The first phase would be the largest, almost half of the overall development, consisting of two hotels, a luxury product with a royal yacht marina uh, next to it, and, uh, and, uh, and more of a family, an upper upscale family hotel combined with a destination retail um, uh, around 60,000 square meters. We're really looking to create this vibrant water for, waterfront feel with a lot of F&B, a lot of tourist attractions, visitor centers showcasing the maritime heritage of Oman um, and, and the cultural values of, uh, of the country. Um, what we're looking for, essentially, we, we are a, a, a capable developer, but this project is very large scale. We will retain a master development role we will lay down the infrastructure and, of course, own the land and create a lot of the attractions. And we're looking for sub-developers who are interested in commercially viable modules of this project. If somebody would want to do a, a, one of the hotels, which are, we've listed two of the immediate opportunities, which are two of the hotels, but there's the four-star hotel is combined with the retail component. There's almost 400 residences, some of them branded residences, conceived in the first phase. Some look and feel images you'll see is very different from most of the waterfronts around the world because we want to retain the authenticity of the historic city center. Um, so here we are. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, so uh, in terms of the, you're looking for six uh, hotel projects. Overall, across the four phases of the project, it's six or seven. We have some flexibility. Immediate, two. Okay. And have you secured any, um, any hotels, uh, hotel brands yet? Oh, we, we have a lot of interest from, from most of the large hotel brands, especially for the luxury products. It's a, it's a very unique, uh, if we go back to the first page, uh, basically the, the views that, that you have from any of the spot uh, of, the, of the harbor, it's really stunning. Uh, we don't want to commit with anybody because if, if the developer pre has a preference or has, has a concept in mind, then we want to leave that freedom. We will exercise that master developer role. We will grant some sort of land ownership to the developer and, and have an arrangement, a deal with them, of course, uh, to secure that those assets are, are going to be uh, um, developed in, a, in, in, in the planned time frame. Right. And what about the... Um I mean, this is a, a massive project, so what about the demand side? How are you um, facilitating that? Or it, it is, It's a 60 hectare scheme. It is massive. Uh, we will probably uh, focus on the regional demand. There's, there's tremendous amount from, uh, demand from Muscat itself. Um, um, and, and the regional demand is, 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 is there. Um, maybe we'll... European demand will be secondary. However, we're, we're going to have a special status uh, which grants uh, freehold ownership for, for unit owners, uh, foreign unit owners, uh, which, which is called ITC, Integrated Tourism Complex. It's, it's a special legal status that a developer can have uh, to be able to sell freehold in, uh, in, within its schemes. Okay, and uh, what about the airline as well? There's a lot... There's, um Quite a bit happening, isn't there? With um... yes, Oman Air is the national carrier. It's growing at a very sustained pace. The, there's a new airport under construction, which is going to be open next year. Already uh, receives 10 million arrivals a year, and it's aiming to to have a capacity of 12 million in in the next couple of years. Uh, a new low-cost carrier is going to be launched, an Omani low-cost carrier. The regional connectivity is very strong. European connectivity is, is growing, but uh, um, not comparable to, to Dubai or Abu Dhabi yet. 
And if, if people want to find out more about the project, what kind of documents do you have available? What kind of studies have you had done already? We, we've, we've done uh, this project. It was in various shapes of form in the making for the last five years. It got a bit of momentum in the last 10 months. We have a revised detailed master plan performed, done by Atkins. That's available. We have valuation studies, market studies done, that's all available. We, ca we can provide uh, with interested parties all of these. And, and the, the planning consent, always one of the key issues. What's the status of planning? Our role as a government-backed developer will be to secure uh, the planning, to, to help developers cross the planning hurdles. We will take care of all the, not the planning, sorry, the permitting yep. hurdles. We will take care of all the permits and, and, and guide them through the the process. Perfect. Uh, and then, and finally, if there's someone in the room who doesn't understand the, the difference in character compared to Dubai and Oman, how would you kind of summarize what, what's different about going to Oman compared to, say, investing in Abu Dhabi or Dubai in terms of its character? Th think of Oman and Muscat as a charming countryside city which o retained all its authentic character and look and feel and, and the people are, are, are friendly and open and think of Dubai as a theme park, as a, as a flish, flashy, glitzy, shiny, uh, overstated experience. Not controversial at all, but thank no, you very no. much. <laughs> <laughs> Great, excellent, thanks so much. Okay, our next uh, presentation is by Christopher. On, um, he's got a project in Greece. So, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christopher Theo Harris. I'm the uh, managing director of Cosmos Consulting SA, a management consulting firm uh, based in Greece. Uh, the reason I'm here is to uh, raise capital in order to realize our investment project. Our investment project involves the establishment of a five star luxury beach resort, hotel. Uh, villas, spa, and conference center. It's based on uh, North Greece and uh, in Kavala specifically, which is uh, the upcoming Greek Riviera. Uh, it's the second biggest city in uh, North Greece and uh, one of the most beautiful ones. Uh, the land. Uh, we have acquired the land uh, on a leasehold basis uh, since 2003. We have invested 8 million euros and it uh, operates since then successfully as a tourist multiplex. Uh, our, project, our project will be uh, 14,000 square meters of uh, total Sus area and 5,000 uh, meters of uh, communal area, which will have uh, restaurants, uh, conference center, uh, shopping center, uh, cinema, open theater, uh, and uh, spa, fitness room, uh, no, no, no. Uh, the specific land is very unique as it's supposed to be, uh, first of all, uh, is uh, just beside the city of Kavala and it has a slope, so it means all the suits, on the, all the amenities will have sea views. Now, the uh, total cost of the project with prices of 2014 is 42 million euros. We believe that this can be decreased uh, up to 10 to 15 percent. Uh, this uh, cost includes, uh, one second, I cannot see it. Uh, this uh, cost includes uh, 1.6 million working capital. It has a subsidy, free government funding of 13 million euros. And uh, it also includes a loan, long-term loan of 13 million euros. Now, the total investment capital needed is 18.5 million euros. Now, the investment valuation ratios, I uh, would say, are quite tempting, as uh, among others, uh, there is a payback period of 4.3 years, and the residual value of the project uh, is about 80 million euros. If we can go to the next slide. Yep. Now, on top of that, the project can be expanded uh, on a real estate basis as there is a conterminous uh, uh, land just above our project on the uh, orange, uh, where you can see it is the orange part. Uh, this land is 140 acres and uh, we can build 28,000 uh, meters worth of villas and apartments. 
an estimated value of, of the land of 4 million euros. Now, finally, there is a business plan, a master plan ready that we, uh, can be at your disposal. And of course, we can arrange a uh, tour of the site. <coughs> now, regarding the demand, uh, Greece is an established tourist, tourist destination. At the moment, I would say luxury tourism is, is booming. And the reason is that uh, uh, of the last uh, 40 years and so, because of the political situation, uh, big investments uh, couldn't be established. That's why we only have uh, uh, big resorts from uh, four or five families. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I would say there are uh, more, uh, about 10 venture capitals in Greece. We have more than 20 resorts being established. And uh, I believe uh, more than 200 uh, resorts like that can be built just to cover the uh, demand. And remember, at the moment, there is a 20% growth every year. Okay, great. Thanks very much, um, Christopher. Thank you. Um, so tell me, when, when, when did these studies, when did these studies, uh, when did you have these studies done? Uh, 2014, and uh, we uh, have, uh, uh, since 2014, yeah. To the, and who did them? Cosmos Consulting SA, my company. Your company, okay. We are 30% uh, shareholders, and 70% uh, shareholders is uh, Gary Fallu Group of Companies, which is the biggest company in uh, Greece and Balkans in the glass industry. Okay. Have you it's had a, a multi-million company in Greece. Okay. So have you had a professional um, study done on the hotel component from a hotel expert? Yes, our company is supposed to be a hotel expert. Your company is a hotel. Okay. Yes. That's good. We're supposed to be... No, we are among the 30 uh, biggest consulting companies in Greece. Okay. okay. We specialize in... In hospitality. And uh, what I want to say, this business plan is not about speculations. These are based on statistics from other hotels which are customers of ours over the last 10 years. Okay, and so you're looking... So I'm very, very confident about the results. Okay, and you're looking for 18.5 million, is that correct? We're looking about 18.5 million euros, and uh, we're willing to give uh, about 66% uh, of the uh, shares of the project. We just want to keep 34% of it. Mm -hmm. um, just with regard to connectivity, um, how, how do people get to the resort? Uh, if you want to go back to the slide, mm. there are two. Oh, no. Yes, there are two airports serving the uh, specific location. One is the airport of Kavala, which is about 10 minutes away from our resort. During the summer time, there are direct flights to most of the uh, capitals of Europe, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have uh, an hour's drive from the Saloniki Airport, which is the uh, second biggest city of Greece, which is connected, uh, especially in summer time, to all over the world. And then for the real estate component, is it possible to sell homes with freehold on of that? Of course, of course, this is a freehold. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, we're talking with venture capitals over the last few months. One of them, uh, most of them have studied our numbers and everything, and one of them is about uh, to sign uh, in the next few months. Um, uh, and... Uh, I would say the real estate, most of them, they want the resort, but they want the houses as well. Yeah, that's In why order I asked to the sell the houses <laughs> and operate the resort and get out in the six to seven times, mm -hmm. uh, seven years period. Excellent. What I want to okay. say is the specific land, which is private cover and everything, and in Greece, which is not uh, always one plus one equals two, uh, it's not very easy to acquire the land, even mm. if you have a lot of money. Uh, specifically, Garifaro Group of Companies is a third generation uh, businessman in Kavala. Okay. They originated from Kavala. Uh, that's why we had uh, access to this land. Brilliant. Good. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, our next uh, presentation is on Budapest, the Budapest train station historic building. Um, do we have our presenter here? No? What a missed opportunity. Okay, okay. but we do have... Okay, but we do have... Zara. Zara. Lena. Lena. Lena? Fantastic. So Lena's going to talk about the Eco Lodge in Jordan, correct? Perfect. Um, I have... Uh, I brought this... Uh, Hold on. Printouts, if you like. Okay. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, I have printouts about the projects that I'm presenting, so if you'd like to see them, uh, I'll leave them here. Um, and let me get my notes. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for IHIF, uh, for Jonathan, for Ben, uh, for uh, uh, allowing me. Can we, can we uh, go back, please? Yeah. Okay, exactly. And, um, what I will be presenting today, I'll be presenting an idea for business development in Jordan. Um, it is, um, it is uh, uh, about the wellness uh, uh, business, it's about the uh, medical uh, uh, tourism business. Uh, but before I do that, let me introduce myself. My name is Lina Annab. I am the general manager of Zara Investment uh, Holding Company. It's a hospitality company. It's an hotel owner uh, company in Jordan. We are the largest uh, hotel uh, owners in Jordan. We own seven five-star hotels, uh, in addition to other uh, 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 hospitality-related uh, plots of lands and uh, other businesses. Uh, we are um, very much in the spa business in the sense that we we own two of the largest spas and most comprehensive spas in Jordan, one at the Dead Sea and one in Aqaba. Um, it's a very small world since the project that I will be presenting, Ben at some point was familiar with it, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm expecting some challenging questions today. Um, uh, uh, again, as I said, the project I'm presenting today is, is basically, uh, uh, it's an idea for business development for interested investors. What we are looking for, we're not so much looking for investors as such as a company, we're only looking for interested parties to carry on the idea with us. We are starting it with the project that I will be presenting. However, the potential for what we are to do is huge and I will be showing that. Okay. Uh, the project is called the Hemme Thermal Springs as you see. Right. You uh, the, the project is a three-star eco lodge with thermal mineral springs uh, spa in Hemme north of Jordan. Uh, it's in this area. Uh, the global thermal mineral springs market size is estimated at 50 billion dollars in the, in the world. I was very very surprised to find when we were doing this research because um, it sounded uh, uh, humongous. However, when we looked more into it, it's uh, it's it's more or less accurate. If you look at the global wellness industry uh, in in business, it is valued at 3.4 trillion dollars. Again, this was a, a mind-boggling uh, statistic that uh, um, we found. If you consider especially pharmaceuticals to be a one trillion uh, dollar business. So this is definitely an area where, where a lot of money can be made. The local market in Jordan is estimated conservatively at 500 to 600 million dollars. Uh, already we have in this market, uh, already we have 100 million dollars being generated from this business. The opportunity uh, here again, I want to uh, emphasize the business uh, development aspect of it. Only four out of 19 curative sites with thermal and mineral springs all over Jordan are currently developed. Uh, close to 160 thermal and mineral springs are open for development. So if we can, if we look at it in, in percentage wise, we have on, only 10% being uh, exploited in this field. Uh, why consider, uh, why to consider investing? Demand is shifting and, mar and the market is uh, growing. Uh, as you see, there was a recent study done by 2019, emerging developing markets are projected to account for 49% of global health uh, and wellness product sales, including thermal and mineral uh, springs water uh, offerings. This is up only from 2002. It used to be 28%. In 2019, they're expecting it to be 49%. So there's a huge potential there. Um, why, what is it, in, what is, what is in it for, what, uh, what is in it for, for us as Zara? I mean, this is a, we're, we're, we're uh, looking to invest three to five million dollars. Um, it's a very small project, relatively speaking, to the kind of projects that we are involved in. However, we believe this is a, this is a market that we need to look into. Zara is now looking into diversifying our offering, especially that the demand is changing worldwide, and this is something that we feel there's an opportunity for us to look into. The curative tourism is an untapped market with significant potential in Jordan. As you saw, we have 200 thermal springs, only about 10 is being, are being exploited. Uh, curative tourism is not a capital intensive industry, so this is something that we can roll out uh, quite uh, uh, quickly with good financial returns. Uh, you're going too fast, Ben. 
Can you go back? Le Lena, uh, your time is nearly <laughs> up. Okay. Well, what we envision is we envision a, a development of a three-star ecology. Uh, we want to emphasize the vernacular and eco-friendly architecture because we're also hoping to revive uh, a, a certain building style that we have lost in Jordan. And again, this is what we are looking for. This is how it looks today. This is the site. And this is the type of architecture we're looking for. Thank you. And sorry to go over my time. <laughs> no, well done. Well done. Um, so hold on. I, I just want to understand this looks like a lovely project but wh what is it you're looking for uh, I'm looking for I'm looking to uh, highlight the potential for an for investment in this field in Jordan okay. we are we are investing this is this is this is the beginning of so a you're, series you're actually doing this project yourself anyway yes we are doing it and uh, it's a beginning of a series so if we look at 19 uh, at 19 sites we're already doing one there is another four done we have another 15 mega uh, major opportunities uh, for this type of business in Jordan. So do you do you organize the planning on these sites? Uh, no, what we are, what uh, again, I mean, it's a little bit weird because we're not asking for investments as such. We're asking for interested investors to look into this field because we are starting this uh, this uh, new business, if you like, this thermal business that is not being fully exploited. And if anybody is interested in in in, in a greenfield uh, business, if you like, this is this is an opportune uh, uh, chance to uh, to look into something like this. It's a it's a business development idea, really, and it's. Uh, we believe there's a huge potential for it, and if we do it right, we could be starting a, a successful series in the thermal business, especially that we saw that the potential or the value, the market value, the global market value is estimated at 50 billion. This was the first time that this gets uh, uh, counted, if you like, or calculated. Um, it was done only last year. Okay, a couple of questions. Tell me. Um, the first one is for people who haven't ever invested in Jordan before, why, what's, tell us a little bit, because I know you're passionate about Jordan, but just a little bit about Jordan and why Jordan is a good place to invest. And then the other bit, just so we all know, is just run us through what are the other properties that Zara own and the brands affiliated with them, just to demonstrate the stature of the company in Jordan today. Okay. Uh, Jordan, as we like to say, yes, I am very passionate about Jordan because I love Jordan. Uh, Jordan, as we say, is a virtual museum. Uh, Jordan, you scratch the, the surface and you find, you find, you find, you find uh, treasures, if you like. The site that I am showing you used to be the, the, the resort, the spa, for one of the Decapolis Roman cities. Uh, uh, the city, it's, it's called Jidara. So uh, the, the, the residents of Jidara used to go to Hemme in order to do their spa and their, uh, their their usual uh, uh, um, um, recreation. So, uh, um, uh, in terms of product offering, the diversity of the product in Jordan is incredible from a business development point of view. We, when we think of Jordan, we think of Petra, we think of Dead Sea, we think of uh, Gerash maybe, but we, many people don't know much about the kind of, pro, uh, of service of uh, tourism that could be offered in Jordan, whether it is adventure tourism, religious tourism, cultural tourism, medical tourism, there's a lot to be offered there and they are all, you could say, green fields. None of them, very little has been exploited when it comes to specialized tourism in Jordan. Okay, and then a bit about Zara. Okay. I'm passionate about Zara too. <laughs> uh, Zara, as I said, is, is the biggest hospitality company in Jordan. We have seven five-star hotels, uh, uh, one intercontinental the one we're staying in, the same brand. Uh, Grand Hyatt also is uh, with us. Uh, we, are, we also have five resorts, uh, branded Move and Pick, one at, the Dead, uh, one at the Dead Sea, two in Petra, and two in uh, Aqaba. It's, uh, Aqaba is the shore city, or the coastal city on the, uh, on the Red Sea. We also own uh, several uh, prime uh, 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 land, uh, plots of lands. Uh, they are all slated for development, some of them for mega projects. I did, I did not choose to to present the mega project today because I think this is if you ask me this is more interesting and this is more doable and this could be more done more immediate than thinking about a, a hundreds of millions of uh, dollar project so um, okay okay great so if um, if we're not particularly interested in spas because we don't have that expertise you've got other projects that uh, might be of interest to um, more typical absolutely operations, yeah. absolutely yes okay. yes and if you would allow me um, yesterday we presented the Jordan Trail it has nothing to do with Zara but, uh, but it's a very interesting uh, project we're gonna, we're gonna bike it I think you we're gonna you're gonna bike it yep. I'm gonna walk it I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. bike it yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, uh, I, I'm leaving brochures about the project that I just presented and also about
about the Jordan Trail. Jordan Trail, think of it as the Camino Santiago of Jordan, except it's a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Excellent. Lina, thank you so much. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you to all our presenters and those interesting projects. And um, uh, what we're going to do, as I said at the beginning, we're going to circulate all those projects to all the delegates so they can access and see all the details, soft copies of those projects. And we're also going to send it through the IHIF News, which has a database of 40,000. So even though you know uh, it, the room isn't packed, we've got some good people here, but we will certainly be um, promoting these projects through to our, our contacts. So on behalf of Ben and myself, thank you for uh, participating and, and joining us. And uh, lunch kicks off at, uh, in 15 minutes.